Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, Pastor. Father John Broby, Associate Pastor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. We celebrate Friday in the octave of Easter this morning. We take a moment to recognize the Lord present in our lives, recognize at the same time our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. Let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may e express in deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you, healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we were to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone, the stone rejected, rejected by the builders, by the builders has, has become, become the cornerstone. cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone, the stone rejected by the builders, builders has, has become, become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone, the stone rejected, rejected by the builders, by the builders has, become has become the cornerstone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus re revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. 
Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even, even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The appearances of Jesus are, after the resurrection, very much the, the set of readings that we've had during the octave of Easter. And this one again is another of the appearances. And it said at the end of the reading, the third time Jesus revealed himself. And as we've heard in the various readings, the disciples have experienced Jesus, the risen Lord, a couple of times. But they don't know what to do after that. He's there, and then he's gone. And so, so Peter, I'm imagining today, and as the gospel unfolds, says, well, I don't know what to do. Let's go back fishing. And gathers up seven others, a total of seven, and off they go fishing. And, of course, all night catch nothing. And the next day, Jesus is on shore. Have you caught anything? And... No, we haven't caught a thing. You can imagine how frustrating it must have been. They, they'd been following Jesus for all this time and hadn't been fishing because they'd been following Jesus. Now they go back, catch nothing. It's, it's almost like, well, you shouldn't be fishing anyway. You should be about the business of being a disciple of the Lord. Most important, it seems to me, in the, in the gospel reading today, though, when the fish are caught, the beloved disciple says, it is the Lord. That recognition of the risen Lord is probably the most important moment. Once that recognition happens, the whole focus changes from the fishing to recognizing how they are to be disciples of that risen Lord. It is the Lord, that experience of him as risen Lord must have been an overpowering sort of thing. The part of the gospel that follows right after this is that whole questioning of Jesus, to, of Peter, do you love me? Simon, do you love me? And of course, he responds, 
positively three times. And each time Jesus says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. In other words, there's more going on now than fishing. You're to be about the business of spreading the good news because you have recognized that he is the risen Lord. That whole thing unfolds very mightily in the first reading where obviously Peter has recognized Jesus as the risen Lord. The Holy Spirit has come upon him. He boldly professes that faith to all in the synagogue, in the temple, in the anyone who will listen. And it says 5,000 became believers. They recognized it is the Lord. Today, we're called to recognize it is the Lord. Right here in this Eucharist, to recognize the risen Lord is with us, present to us, giving us the same challenge Peter received to spread that good news, to witness to the fact that we believe it is the Lord that he is with us and among us. Today, may we have that gift of the Spirit in our lives, opening our hearts to witness in whatever way is appropriate for us this day. May we open our hearts to how it is the Lord who is with us, present to us, giving us his risen life as well. Lord, our God, we bring our prayers and needs before you, confident that you are present to us in your risen life. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may our risen Savior fill them with zeal as they preach the gospel of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God enlighten their minds and give them courage to follow him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the justices and judges of this country, that the Holy Spirit stir in them to have dignity for life from conception till natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and all entering the church, may the Holy Spirit guide their path and draw them into fullness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Holy Spirit fill us with the joy of Christ's resurrection and make us faithful witnesses of his truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sandy and for all who have died in Christ, may he welcome them to his heavenly kingdom to rejoice with him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for all those prayers that are in the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, we bring these prayers and needs before you with confidence and joy, knowing that you are among us with your risen life, for you live as our God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to the longing for the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on this season, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been crucified and sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he gave, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God, our Father, today may I have an opportunity by actions to encourage a vocation to the religious life. Help me to conduct myself in a Christian manner that I might give proper example, particularly to the young. Through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, may I also support those in religious life in their vocation of service to your church. May the sincerity of my prayers and my concern for vocations result in an increase of laborers for Jesus and his church. Amen. You're certainly welcome to come to the to St. Clair room for refreshments this morning, coffee and some kind of goodies, I'm sure, and to talk for those who are part of the Sarah Club and consider being part of it yourself. So again... You're invited to come to the St. Clair room after Mass. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness and redeemed by the passion of your Son. May they rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.